So if you have been watching my videos religiously, you might be wondering why am I wearing same hijab and same shirt in all my three previous videos is because I recorded all the three intros the same day. So I just want to make a little bit amendment and wear my glasses so that at least I look a little bit different and it's not be so prominent. Assalamualaikum, I'm Arfa Flak and welcome to Fried and Tasted. All the recipes here are tried and tested. So today is again a cookie day. Now you are wondering why I'm making so many cookies these days. Of course, it's a holiday season, vacation is almost beginning and uh, you are invited to some or the other place, to your friend's home and of course when we visit them, we always take some or the other sort of gift. And what is a better and more thoughtful gift than making something from your own hands and then gifting it to them and making these eggless butter cookies uh, would be an amazing gift because it wouldn't be just one kind of cookie that you would give them. With the same dough, you can make a variety of cookies. I'll be portraying four kind of cookies, but trust me, just add some nuts, some chocolate chips or some cranberries. Uh, just uh, dip the prepared cookie into melted chocolate and you can end up with 10 kind of cookies from this very same dough. So yes, I have made it eggless like I mentioned before. So it can be eaten by anyone and they can be prepared in exactly 20 minutes and then you just have to let it cool down for some time before they are nice and crispy and then pack it and they are ready to go. So yes, if you like this video, don't forget to press the like button and comment below and let me know if you find it useful. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and share it with others as well and help me grow. Now quickly, let's see how to make it. Okay, so I'll roughly go through the ingredients. You can find the exact measurements in the description below. So here I have some butter, some powdered sugar. It's important to use the powdered sugar because it has a little bit of cornstarch or potato starch in it which we need in these cookies. Then here I have some all-purpose flour, some vanilla extract. So mainly I'll be needing these. And then if I need, I'll also use a little bit of milk or baking powder as needed. Here in a big bowl, I have taken some softened butter. So if I put my finger through it, it would stick. And I just left it at room temperature for an hour or so. And uh, they have softened up. And now with the help of a machine blender or a hand whisk, I'm just going to uh, blend it until it becomes a little light and fluffy. It will not take more than 30 seconds to one minute. And now I'll simply take the powdered sugar and add it in the dough as well. And then on low speed, start combining it until again it is a little light and fluffy. Now for the flavoring, I'm adding some vanilla extract which is completely optional or you can use any other extract that you want. Scrape the sides of the bowl and whisk again until it is combined. And this is how our dough looks like right now before adding flour. So now it's time to add the flour. I'll simply sift the flour and gradually add it into the dough in portions just so that it is easier to combine this way. So just simply take your spatula, this time you don't need to use any whisk, just with the help of a spatula, scrape the side of the bowl and start folding the flour inside the dough. And once it's all combined, I like to do this, that I wash my hand and then with the help, with the warmth of my hand, I'll give the final touch to the dough to combine everything together. So now our base of all the four cookies are prepared. And uh, now for the first kind of cookie, which is the cutout cookie, I'll simply take a parchment paper, fold it into half and then cut it once again. Basically, I just want to get two pieces of parchment paper ready. And then I'll take some portion of the dough and place it right in the center. And take the other parchment paper and place it on top of this dough. 
press it gently with my palm and then take a rolling pin and roll it out into any thickness that you prefer. You can make it thinner or a little bit thicker than what I made. You can see that with the parchment paper it's pretty easy to remove it. And now I'll simply put it in refrigerator for 30 minutes to 1 hour. In the meanwhile, we'll prepare the second kind of cookie from the same dough itself. So I have taken a cookie sheet and lined it with silicone mat. You can use parchment paper as well. And I'll simply take a small portion of the dough and roll it out into a ball. And then press it gently from top. And I'll continue doing this with a few more dough balls. And once I'm done doing this, I'll simply take a fork and with the back of it, I'll gently press it on these dough balls to give a nice mark on top of it. Just look how beautiful they look like. And for an extra cherry on top, I'll simply chop some hazelnut and press it on top of these flattened dough ball as well. And yes, my oven is already preheated at 180 Celsius or 350 Fahrenheit. And these cookies are ready to be baked. But before that, I'll also take out, because there was some more space on that cookie sheet, I decided to go ahead and put the cutout cookies on the same cookie sheet. So here I'm using heart shaped cookie cutter. Of course, you can use any shape that you prefer. Try not to cut from the, I mean leave some part at the edge because the edges, the edge part is thinner than the center part. So it's better to leave out that otherwise you will get uneven shaped cookie and some of the, some part of the cookie will get brown more. And then I'll carefully, very carefully lift it off with the help of an offset spatula and place it on this cookie sheet. Be very careful with it. You can remove excess of the dough with the help of your finger or knife. And yes, now they are ready to go in the oven. The time varies according to your oven. But after the thin cookie will be baked in like 4 to 6 minutes, I'll take it off. And then I'll let the other cookies uh, be in the oven for say uh, 3 to 4 minutes more. Now for the remaining dough, I'll simply add some milk in it to thin out the dough a little bit. So I don't want to go crazy thin with this. I just want the dough to be a little thinner so that it is easier for me to pipe for making the other two kind of cookies. And once it is done, I'll simply take my piping bag and put it in the piping bag. But before that, yes, I have to take care of my cookie and I can see that the cutout ones are ready. In fact, they got a little browner than what I would expect. So yes, it is always important to keep an eye on these cookies. Right now the cookies are soft, but we all know that's how cookies work. As soon as you see a little brown on the edges, it means they are done and you should take them out. And in uh, 15 minutes or so, they'll become nice and crispy. So I've put the remaining cookie, the flattened one, back into the oven and here I went back to piping my uh, cookie dough into this piping bag. So the first piping bag has a star nozzle. I'll simply seal the edge with the help of a back clipper like I normally always do for my cake frosting. And here is the other one which has a round nozzle and I'm just going to show you how it looks like. And the one in the oven, that cookie is done as well. I'm just going to check it out and take it out. Yes, you can see they have got those brown edges around it. So again, I'm going to carefully lift them up and transfer it to my cooling rack. So yay, we are done with two cookies and two more are left. So here comes the third one. I'll just take my star nozzle put it right in the center and then swirl it around to give it a rose shape. So this is going to be a little difficult compared to what you normally do with the buttercream frosting because this one is really tight. The dough is stiff. So you have to put like a good amount of pressure to swirl it around and whatever 
uh, edge is poking out of the rose, you can simply use your finger to press it and dab it inside. And yes, all my roses are done, so they go in the oven too for 8 to 10 minutes or it can even go up to 12 minutes for some oven. The temperature is exactly same like before which is 180 Celsius. And here comes the fourth one in which I'm using my round nozzle to make a flower. And you can see it's a very easy one again of course you have to put a lot of pressure because the dough is stiff I'll simply make these petals like this and I'll continue making and finish off all the dough that I have and once this is done I'm going to put them in the oven as well but before that yes my roses cookie are done as well you can see that they got the golden color around it so it means they are done and this other flower one goes in the oven for again 8 10 12 minutes whatever it depends on your oven keep an eye on it maybe uh, after baking it for a couple of times you'll get the idea of how your oven works and the final batch of cookie is done too right now they are very soft so be careful in a while I'll just lift them up carefully and transfer it on the cooling rack so we are done with all these four different kind of cookies they definitely look gorgeous so you can make varieties add some nuts and if you want you can also add some baking powder in the dough and then make it into shortbreads or dip these cookies into uh, chocolate melted chocolate and make another kind of cookie so yes if you like this video don't forget to press the thumbs up and comment below and definitely let me know about this video and don't forget to subscribe of course if you like this video don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and uh, help me grow and uh, look for more videos here have a nice day.